Alright, so we're currently parked cold and dark at East Midlands, which means everything is turned off. As you can see, the overhead panel is completely dark, nothing's turned on, and the autopilot panel here is completely blank. The IRS display up here is showing a nonsense reading because nothing's turned on. So basically, I'm just going to quickly go through the pre flight procedures for the first two columns. Obviously, the pre flight procedure does cover all five columns of the overhead panel and other parts of the cockpit but for the purpose of this video we're just going to keep it short so the first thing we're going to do we're going to turn the battery curry switch on right here and then turn the standby power switch to auto as I do that you'll see quite a few enunciators come on and also the autopilot panel down there will illuminate so let's just do that alright so as you can see we've had a few enunciators in the curry switches turn on and the autopilot panel is now live. The IRS panel is also fully working and also we have a few overhead cautions here such as captain's p-show, spoilers and rudder ratio and so on. Next on the uh, pre-flight checklist is to turn all three IRS mode selectors to nav and um, as I do that as you can see the on direct current enunciator lights appear. So we're going to let those align while we do the rest of the procedures. Next we have to turn both your damper switches on and both EEC switches on. Now for this next part the checklist does advise that you leave all hydraulic pumps apart from the primary engine pumps uh, left and right there all of them off but just to make the video a little more interesting we're just going to turn them on just for the purposes of this video so turning all four hydraulic pumps on and all three demand switches just get my camera down here to the auto position. Okay, next on the checklist is to go to the top of column 2 and check for ordinary cautions. Now we did this at the start of the video already but I'm um, just going to glance over them again. Cautions such as left AOA, Captain P show, Reich's Auxiliary P show, spoilers, but a ratio. This is the EVAC panel. Now the level D software doesn't actually support this so I had to make the scripting for this bit myself but it's, uh, it's turned out pretty okay and basically um, the function of this panel is to light this evac light up here it also when activated and when I say the word activated I mean when this toggle switch here is flicked it also produces a very high pitched sound now for this video I've disabled that sound because it is very loud and it would pretty much distort my voice in the video so we're just not going to do that but I can uh, just activate this as you can see as I flick that switch the evac light has come on it looks very bright on video but that's because for some reason the camera really hates the glare it looks perfectly visible in uh, with a normal human eye and as you can see I flicked it off there and the evac light's gone off next is the HF panel uh, which stands for high frequency now you'd never usually use this panel in normal operations it's used purely as an emergency backup and the checklist at this point in time advises you to have it turned off and as you can see the display is completely dead it is turned off one thing that should be noted though is the backlighting of the HF panel if you can see the letters HF there they're actually quite brightly lit um, the only reason it doesn't look brilliantly lit is because this room is actually quite bright so the contrast isn't that great but you can see around the edges of this rotary encoder here there's a bit of light the squelch, uh, squelch label sorry, is lit up this encoder as well you can see that that orange ring is actually uh, several orange LEDs lighting that up uh, so yeah that's the backlighting for the HF panel and that automatically turns on whenever the battery is turned on and next we're moving down to the battery panel where we started um, obviously I haven't adjusted them since the start of the video so still the battery's turned on and standby power is set to auto however since we don't have the APU or the engine started the discharge light uh, is illuminated telling us that the battery is discharging and we need to get some alternative power source going to the aircraft which we will do in a second and next on the checklist we just have to glance over the very pretty electrical panel we need to make sure everything is turned on as you can see we have a few error messages down here but that's because we haven't started the auxiliary power unit yet which is precisely what we're going to do now now the APU is unique that um, this three-way 
position switch is actually spring loaded from the start to on position so if you turn it to start and let go it will ping back to on which is what I'm about to show you um, to start the APU you literally turn it to the on position hold it in the start position for a few seconds and then let go and it will ping back to on so that's what we're going to do now so I've turned it to on the fault light appears because even though the APU is on it hasn't started so we want that to disappear and the run light to appear so we're going to start it now turned it to the start position and as I let go it pings back to the on position the run light is started to flash which means the APU started and the fault light has distinguished so we're just going to wait a minute for the APU to start alright so it's a minute later and as you can see the run light is now staying solid which means the APU has successfully started a few things to note all the caution lights on the hydraulic panel have uh, completely distinguished and also the bus off switches that were here have now distinguished as well because we have power going to the aircraft not just from the battery and obviously the discharge light has gone out because the battery can now charge one thing I'd like to show you as well, um, even though it should be turned off for normal use, I'm just going to show you the HF panel. Um, I'm going to I'm going to turn it on. It's turned on by this squelch knob here, which is a potentiometer. In real life, this squelch knob actually just adjusts interference on the radio. It cuts it out or increases it depending on your liking. Um, however, uh, for the purposes of my cockpit, I've just uh, scripted it so that when you turn the squelch knob approximately uh, 70 or so degrees it turns the HF panel on so I'm just going to do that for you now so as you can see I've uh, turned the squelch knob about 70 degrees or so and the uh, numbers 02.800 have appeared these numbers alone don't mean anything they're just a frequency that happens to be dialed in to the HF panel at the moment this frequency can be adjusted by these two knobs here as you can see I'm, I'm increasing the frequency now um, let let's I don't know aim for a frequency of 10.307 for the purposes of this video so 10.307 there you go so I've just tuned frequency of 10.307 on the HF panel and this uh, AM and USB switch here simply allows you to switch between AM and USB oops sorry not my microphone over there uh, AM and USB channels and since this should be off for normal operations I'm just going to turn it off there uh, one last thing I'd like to show you is something that pilots call the Christmas tree test it's literally a lights test now you've already seen it earlier in this video but you haven't seen it sort of live really I haven't seen a lights test while the cockpit is running uh, for ease of use I've coded the lights test to this pull switch here which is like the APU start switch down here also spring loaded so when I pull it out it pings back in uh, when I do pull the switch out everything in the cockpit lights up in real life it's exactly the same except it's not operated by a pull switch here it's operated by a switch lower down on the over panel which we haven't installed yet so without further ado I'm just going to activate the lights test so I've just pulled it there and as you can see everything in the cockpit is now turned on so I just released it there and everything returns back to its state most things have turned off but some things for example like the battery light have stayed on because obviously we want that to be on so that pre pretty much concludes this video I hope you've enjoyed it it sort of concludes the building of column 2 and we're next going to work on inserting column 3 which is obviously 1, 2, 3 and that will go right here so we're looking for completion really hopefully before the end of the year but you never know what could happen so thanks very much for watching this video and if you've got any questions please post them on uh, either Muttley's Hangar or the YouTube channel thanks a lot